Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. So now Nady has a nice tire changing machine, but she's going to need to balance those wheels and tires in order for her customers to ride safely down the road. So on today's episode, we are going to build a simple tire balancing machine for Nady in order to make that all happen. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and build Nady a nice tire balancing machine. Since Nady is new to the tire changing business, she has decided to purchase a simple wheel balancer and get a more expensive one when her business grows and her finances can cover it. After looking at a few different balancers, Nady has settled on a Freetech portable balancer, otherwise known as a bubble balancer. The bubble balancer has a bullseye spirit level built into the center top of the balancer cone. All Nady needs to do to use it is place a wheel on the top of the balancer, look at the bullseye level bubble and see how it aligns up with the alignment ring. She would then add a wheel weight to the opposite side of the wheel until the bubble moves to the center of the bullseye. A bullseye level allows for the leveling of planes in two dimensions, both the pitch and roll in nautical terms. Here is our simple three-part balancer. We have a base, rod and spring set, balance cone set chart sticker, balancer shaft with a pin on the top, and a nut at the bottom to hold the shaft to the base. Here we have the features of our balancer. In order to build our balancer, we need to take the real world balancer dimensions and divide them by 24 so that our model will be accurate in Nady's scale of 1 24th. In this picture, I have rewritten all the numbers for the sizes we want in 1 24th scale. Please feel free to pause the video here to write these measurements down to build your own Freetech tire balancer in 1 24th scale. Here's the tire balancer Nady wants to get in the future. If you want to help her get it, please consider becoming a channel member. I will make a build video of this Weaver Tire Spinner Balancer once this YouTube channel gets to 10 members. Members will get recognized on this channel's homepage randomly once we reach 8 or more members. Now let's build Nady's Freetech Wheel Balancer. Sometimes with a model kit build you don't have to get too fancy and build all these specialized parts and whatnot. You can just easily find some of this stuff by being observant. And here what I've noticed is these French's mustards, they have a special kind of cap. And the cap splits open like that. And this portion of the cap actually really looks like that base for the tire changing machine. So these come in different colors, of course. We got honey mustard on one side with the brown top, and then we have the classic French's mustard with the yellow. I haven't really seen a red one, so I don't know. For this, I might just use the yellow because, well, yellow is sort of the opposite of red. Now, as we can see, the cap has a spot for you to put your thumb underneath to open it. And then if we just turn it around, it's got these two little hinge points. And one thing that's ingenious with these caps is you can actually bend them around. And you see the, the top of the cap and the base here are actually the same height that you can just click it in place. And then the cap is not constantly closing on you when you're putting mustard on something like your hands. But if we open this up here, we need a 15 30 seconds diameter for the base to be accurate. Now let's see. That is it there. So it's sort of half that distance. And then it needs to be 3 16 of an inch tall, which is, well, just under that big long line on my aunt's little measuring thing here. Whoops, hitting the uh, light with my, my little rod here. So let's see. So that's 3 16 there, so it would be about here somewhere. But you might be able to get it this right if you go 3 16 of an inch from the top and then down, although it would look like this would be still quite wide. So let's see if the top diameter here, that's a bit closer. But I think what I will do, just for ease of convenience and everything, 
is just cut the hinges off here and use this entire height as the base. I don't think it would really matter as long as the whole thing is one inch tall coming up out of here in order for an 80 to put that tire on. And with a wider base this would have uh, less chance of tipping over. As well as you could drill a hole in here where the little thumb flip is and two right there and there for mounting this down onto the floor. One bolt in front and two in the back. So on second thought, I do think I have to cut this down because here we are with a 90 degree angle and the top of the balancer is supposed to be about an inch high, more or less. Well, here you can see with Nady that uh, the base is going to take up most of that distance. So there isn't really much room to see the rod or whatever else we need on here. And the top of the balancer might actually hit the base because it's so tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out the 3 16 from the top down. I will take my points and adjust them up from the bottom to that line. And then I will set the points and rotate the cap around just to get a line that goes all the way around this cap. And then using my number 16 hobby blade, I'll just simply cut down and then cut around until the bottom comes off. And then with the sanding block, which is down here, I'll just sort of try to sand this a little bit just to flatten it. Now the only issue is going to be the diameter of the top because again that 15, 30 seconds is, you know, something like that. But again, I don't think the base diameter size is going to matter too much. It'll just be that this won't tip as over as easily as the real size one. I don't know if it actually does tip over, I'm just saying that. But you can actually see that the base is quite big compared to the tire. But again, I don't think that matters because this is up in the air and it's sitting on that little balancing pivot. So I had a little bit of an issue cutting this cap. It's designed out of this weird plastic. I'm not quite sure what it is. But basically, I started with trying to cut this with my knife. And there was a, quite a bit of resistance. So I used my Atlas Super Saw here from the 70s. And uh, it was cutting it, but it was just taking forever. And it wasn't really getting very far. So then I thought I would try it with my Zuron side cutters. And that finally did cut it. And now the edge is quite rough, as you can see around here. Hopefully, my sandpaper is going to work on this thing and sand this really weird plastic down. So here is our base, which is the top of that mustard cap. And I was able to sand this down with 180 grit fine sandpaper. Now, this is really nice because it actually now measures that 3 16 of an inch right in there. I don't know if you can see that. And here's the fun part. We now have to put in the rod shaft up through the center. And by turning over the cap, we actually have a little ring right in the middle. And now it'll be easier to line up a hole, drill it right through, and then we can put the shaft in there. So here I have a collection of pins that unfortunately went underwater in the High River Flood. And that's why there's all this mud in the little pin box. But as you can see, the pins are still nice and shiny. And one thing that I want to do so I don't poke myself to death with these things is just file the end off a little bit with a fine file just to knock that really sharp point off of there, but not completely eliminate it because we will need it for our model. Now the nice thing about these pins is they measure an inch long. So when I drill them through that cap, which is our base, the thickness of the plastic will move the pin down, hopefully, you know, just below the inch level. And then you'll never see the pin because it'll be covered with the tire balancing cap with that bullseye level in the top. So what I want to do is drill a hole in that cap. And the nice part is we do have that circle there. So I will find the dead center, drill the hole, and then push the pin up through the top. And then once it's up, you know, it'll be like that sort of thing. And then I can file that end off. Here we have the base for our balancer with the pin drilled through the dead center. We also have filed the top off so that now I won't get poked when I'm doing this. And 
I've also glued it so that it is nice and level. So there you can see when I'm spinning it. All right, so now all we need to do next is build the top of this thing, and then Nady will be ready to balance up some tires. Making the base was pretty easy, but next up we need to make the part in which the tire will sit on once it gets balanced, that kind of aluminum cone. So what we need is a diameter of 17 sixty-fourths. And here I've got this really cheap caliper, and this you can adjust up and down. It also works on the inside of pipes on this side to get the diameter. And this is for the outside of whatever you're measuring. So I will just adjust these calipers up to that 17 sixty-fourths. And next up, we need to find something that has a diameter of that 17 sixty-fourths by putting it in between these calipers. So here I have a whole bunch of plastic parts tree sprues that you would find in your model car kits. And this I inherited off of my dad, this entire box. So here in the box I found this piece, and it does look to be essentially able to fit in here, so that should be our 17 sixty-fourths. So next up we need to put this in our electric drill and clean up the edges, make this a completely circular rod before we begin actually, you know, carving it into shape in order to make that cone in which the tire sits on. So it seems to me my dad put this through a tap and die set just to get the threads down here. They don't really apply to anything. But what needs to happen is these little bumps need to come off because when this spins in the drill you don't really want these bashing away at your file or whatever. So I'm just going to use my Xeron cutters here. Xeron, I don't know how you would pronounce that. But yeah, just cut these uh, part sprue knobs off here. Parts tree knobs. Okay. Now, of course, this is not going to be this long. I mean, how long is this thing even? That's about 9 or 10 inches long, according to our ruler there. But we only need, I think it's, well, it's 5 sixteenths or something like that from the uh, collar. And there's still a bit of this thing sticking out. So actually, I could really cut it off maybe down here or something. You know, nothing precise, just make sure it's long. Well, why don't we try maybe inch and a half or something. Let's cut this thing at an inch and a half. Should give us enough room to, uh, you know, to play in there. Let's see, 64, so it's 30 seconds. Ooh, yeah, inch and a half is a lot. So we can always just cut this off. I still have more in case something goes wrong. Maybe an inch and a quarter. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I will cut this at an inch and a quarter. And then we can stick it in our drill and try to smooth this up a bit. So here I have my electric drill and this file. And what I'm going to do is just turn this on and file it a little bit along here to get rid of the nubs and knobs and everything else. It will remove this chrome plating on here, but that doesn't really make a difference. So quickly, uh, I'll say enjoy the music here. I'll just mute this so you don't hear through the whole thing. And we'll begin. So I sanded this a little more uh, true here, and we do have 1764 still happening, maybe a little bit under at this stage. But again, I don't really think it matters too, too much, just as long as this ends up looking the right way. Now I did notice that uh, this rod is not quite perfect. If I just turn the drill a bit slowly, you can see this silver line on here. That's a low spot. And then there's a, another low spot and a couple of little like circles like tree branches sort of thing. You know, if you uh, if you uh, 
use a tree branch in a wood lathe, this is what you would end up seeing. It's sort of the same thing, but I think what we really need is sort of from here out to the end. So uh, we'll get the measurements for these lengths, and the problem is it's really going off the rings from our drawings. It's not including the cone shape up in here. So we'll need to make a cone shape, and I do believe this end, the diameter here, would match the center of our wheel. So if you remember from our last video where Nady got the tire changer, we have the wheel and tire right here, and that center hole is essentially a 1 8 rod, and I do believe the little bullseye will be a 1 16 rod, which we can just cut a little bit off on the end and glue it on top of the 1 8 rod. Now we're not using rods, well, except for the 1 16 but what we're going to do is try to taper the head of this piece of sprue down to that 1 8 rod thickness right in there. And then we'll just slice a little piece off like a button and glue that on the top once this diameter is, you know, formed into that 1 8 diameter like the rod. So after doing a little bit of drawing, this is sort of what I came up with. Now this would be the aluminum part of our wheel balancer, and it is 5 16 tall right up until it gets to that ring there. And it's supposed to be 3 16 from the base of the ring to the springs to that ring on the top. So we've got the base of our aluminum, then this area here is 1 8 of an inch, and then it tapers to the 1 16 rod on the top, where our bullseye is going to be mounted on. So in between these two lines here and here, that's 5 16 and that's the height we're looking for. And then here we've got our 17 64 and then the center here will be 1 8 of an inch, and then our 1 16 And this is how long it is right in here somewhere. So next I'm going to just use my files and our gauges and everything and our calipers and all that, and try to figure out that 15 16 well, and go in a little more for the the 1 16th rod that's sticking up through the top, but we want to try to carve out that cone with our files and everything else. So here I've drawn a blue line with a sharpie onto the end of the rod here, and this will help me because that is where I want to uh, do all the work is from here outward. And one thing I notice is I've got the 1 8 rod, but our tire and wheel doesn't really want to fit on the 1 8 rod. So that means that this hole is a little smaller than 1 8, but the 1 8 rod will give me a little bit of a guide in here. I also have my drawing down here that I can follow, as well as my sandpaper block and a couple of select files. And as this is spinning, I can now go in and cut it to the right size. So that line there is this line here on our drawing, but not the actual base. The base is going to be back here, and that's so that I can saw it off to whatever I need to back in the section that's in the drill. And out here, I can use those files and everything just to shape this properly. So that's what I'll do now. Okay, so check this out. I tried to use some files and sandpaper, but that was just taking forever. So I have my grandpa's old chisel, and if I lay the drill on its side... I can machine this thing just like a lathe. So now after a bit of work with the drill and the chisel and files and sandpaper, I finally got the collar in the center here 
down to 1 8th, and then the outer bit is still 17 64ths. So how well does this fit on the tire? Well, we got it right the way down now. So this is going really well. That's what it's going to look like and uh, we'll have to cut it shorter. Now one thing I need to do is get in this little taper and bring the end down a bit so that'll require just a little more of the drilling. Now I could actually you know measure this out a bit and maybe saw this off here just to get more of that taper and just to bring this a little closer because it is sitting out quite a long ways out of the tire. And I do think it's only supposed to be maybe about that far out. Something like that. So I will continue to get this cone shape in here with the drills and everything. And we'll see how it looks in a sec. Now here I have the shortened rod end on here. And now I'm going to have to make this less than 1 16th of uh, the rod diameter up here on the end. And here I've got my 1 16th rod bouncing away. But basically, this is going to be that bullseye on the top. So what I'll do is I'll just put this back in the drill and spin it down just a little on the end. But what I also had to do was take my little file here, because there's no um, file teeth on this edge, and just touch it in while the drill was spinning, just to get this nice and square down at the base, because that's what it's supposed to be in order to fit on the wheel. And there we have it. Now the wheel will sit flat, whereas before I was having a bit of a lean into that wheel. Now it should be perfect. And there is our little cone for the tire to sit on. And I did get that little taper on the end. This now makes me think of like a, a glue bottle, you know, sort of that cap or whatever. Now one thing in our uh, tire balancer is there's a bunch of springs and another ring up there. But I don't think I'm going to actually model that because thinking about it in this scale, first off, it's really, really tiny. But second off, I think when you drop this wheel on here, those springs compress down and the ring and all that gets squashed underneath the rim of the tire. So you don't really see that. That's just something I think to, you know, pop this off or whatever. So I don't know if we really need to model that. But basically, this is what it's going to look like. And another nice little thing is, in this rod, there was like an air bubble right on the top. So it actually made a little hole dead center in the rod. So all I need to do is just uh, paint this thing up. And then maybe put a drop of green in there or something to make it look like the bullseye. The final thing we need to do is find the center of this rod underneath. And then just drill a little hole in there going down a bit. Not too far because you don't want to come right up through that one eighth, you know, rod on the other side going through the wheel. But you want a hole deep enough for the pin of the balancer to go in there and actually do its little job. Here we have our bubble balancer sitting on the needle. And this will actually move just like the bubble balancer in real life does. And the way I got this to happen is I drilled dead center underneath with a 1 16th drill, or drill bit, I should say. And then I used my drill index and I used the number 61 drill and drilled into the center of the hole from the 1 16th drill. And now it all rests on that needle down there and looks pretty good. So what we can do is test this out just a little bit by dropping the rim right on there. Now I know I don't have a uh, tire on here right now, but this is just to give you an idea of the balancing here. Uh, if only I had a little wheel weight, we could actually true this up. But now all I need to do is just paint that center cone with some aluminum and maybe a little green dot of paint in the center. Now, I'm going to leave the bottom yellow because I don't know if this stuff, this plastic I used from the mustard bottle, will actually paint or not. <laughs> but I don't think it really needs it because it does have sort of a semi-gloss sort of look to it. So I think I might just leave that. 
In the meantime, I got to find a nice way to hold this cone so I don't end up losing it while I paint it with the aluminum. And then just let that dry. And then I can put my tire back on there. Or actually, Nady can, once she balances all this stuff up. So here we have the top of the balancer now painted up with some aluminum. And I'll install that on there in a minute. But I thought I would make a brand new wheel. And this white rod sticking out of here, well, when I drilled the holes, I discovered that not all wheels have the same equal hole spacing from AMT. So I drilled the one where that rod is and realized it was really off center. So I stuck a little white rod in there and glued it in. And I also got my valve stem in there, which I'll need to cut back on both of them and then paint this wheel up. Yes, so not all wheel bolts are created equal distant to each other. And uh, this one was definitely way off register compared to the others. I also had to redrill that center hole a little bit, widen it out because I couldn't get the uh, balancer here to sit on this wheel, but now I think it's okay. And I'm not really gonna worry too much about that one wheel that got out of whack there, or the wheel lug hole, I should say. So here we go for the early morning test on this thing and there it is so what I'll do is I will add a new tire to that rim and I will paint her up and then we can present this to Nady. so now Nady has all the elements she needs to start up her tire business she has new tires in the back here she also has the Harbor Freight tire changing machine from the previous video she now has a free tech wheel balancer and she's got a customer. So the customer has brought in this old wheel here and it's all ready for a change and a balance. Now, just stepping outside of the narrative here, I painted this wheel semi-gloss black and then added in some testers rust with a dry brush and then painted in the steel color around the nuts and a little bit on the outer edge of the rim where a hubcap would have been. So now let's put this on the balancer and see what happens. See where we need to apply our wheel weights. So there it is on the balancer. And now if I just use my pointer stick and try to move the tire around, you can see that it is quite high up here. So that means that Nady will have to add a wheel weight onto this side. And that should balance the wheel down like this, make it a little bit more level. The other thing she needs to do is turn the wheel over and then add a wheel weight on the inside rim. And that will keep it all nice and true as this wheel goes down the road. So, Nady, I wish you luck in the tire changing business. But I do know one thing that you're going to need to do for expanding. You're going to need a building. So perhaps in a future video, we can start working on a real building for you to have your garage in. So now just for a little bit of fun, YouTube has a brand new feature. So if you just look down underneath the video, if you're watching this from your computer or even your phone, there is two buttons down there. So first off, check out these buttons and uh, tell me what happens. So. All you need to do for this channel is give us a like and then subscribe. So let me know in the comments what happened to those buttons if you haven't already liked or subscribed to this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little episode where we got to build Nati the tire balancer so now she can begin working at her tire business. She's got a rack of tires, she's got the tire changing machine, and now she's got a balancer. So I think she's pretty well ready to go. What else do we need? Maybe a bench. Well, we can build that one in an upcoming video. But for now, if you want to see how I built all these great things, if you're new to this video and haven't seen them before, 
check out this video right here where we get to show you how to build a tire changing machine. And if you want to see model kits, if you want to actually buy some from us, of course we own a web shop. So our web shop is Monster Hobbies Online and you can get there by clicking this icon down here. And finally, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel in order to help us grow and reach more model kit builders. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.